One day, a joyous family gathered to celebrate a birthday party for Ye Wu, the main character of the story. Ye Wu shared a special bond with his family, particularly his younger sister Yun Fei, who appeared puzzled when asked about his 18th birthday wish. Ye Wu expressed his simple desire to live happily with his loved ones. However, the festivities were abruptly interrupted by a catastrophic explosion that tragically caused Ye Wu's father, mother, and sister to fall from the building. A giant, terrifying creature emerged, paralyzing Ye Wu with fear. Suddenly, Ye Wu awoke from what turned out to be a nightmare, realizing he had dozed off in class. The teacher, upon discovering Ye Wu's slumber, was undoubtedly displeased. Ye Wu, who had been studying late into the night, apologized for falling asleep and was subsequently punished by being made to stand at the back of the classroom. The teacher's actions were based on the assumption that Ye Wu was not as intelligent as he truly was, as he feared embarrassment if Ye Wu were to answer his questions correctly, given that he was only considered a B-grade student. After being expelled from his class, the teacher delved into a brief discussion about the Earth's historical evolution and the various experiences the world has undergone. In the year 2036 AD, a sudden disruption in space and time transformed the entire planet into a perilous gaming arena where formidable monsters began appearing at random. However, humans mysteriously gained strength based on their levels and ability to develop diverse occupations and skills. Following numerous years of calamities, five major alliances were eventually established to subdue the monster threat and establish a new world order. This era was characterized by danger and an abundance of unsolved mysteries. Amidst the competition to level up and gain power, Yahoo's story deviated from the norm. The display of HP and mana bars along with a person's level was visible to all, including the monsters that would later emerge. After school, Yehu found himself in the street quarter where he encountered three bullies from his school. One of them, named Luo Feng, who possessed an athletic physique, demanded money for the month's protection fee. Yehu reminded Luo Feng of a time two years prior when he had protected him from a senior student collecting fees, acting as a guardian. However, Luo Feng, now seeking protection fees from Yehu, struck him upon hearing this claiming he had been misled by Yehu's supposed prowess as a level 3 martial artist back then. At this moment, Luo Feng had already advanced five levels, while Yehu was still at level 3. Despite being considered a failure in school, Yehu was unable to progress. However, a sudden kick from Yunfei, Yehu's younger sister, sent Luo Feng flying. Yunfei, at just 16 years old, was already a level 7 fighter showcasing exceptional talent. She was believed to have the ability to defeat level 10 monsters, despite being only level 7. When Ye Hu arrived, Luo Feng and two other troublemakers fled in fear. Encouraging her brother, Yun Fei assured him that he would one day become a formidable fighter. Despite being labeled as a failure, Ye Hu never complained and remained steadfast in his commitment to protect his family and happiness. Determined to become the strongest, Yehu noticed something peculiar about his earlier dream. To prevent any potential harm, he decided to host a party for his family outside. Upon returning home after the celebration, he was relieved to find that nothing untoward had occurred, unlike in his dream. He pondered, could it be that I am excessively concerned? However, out of nowhere, a portal materialized behind him, triggering immediate distress among him and the nearby inhabitants. This was due to the fact that the appearance of such portals typically signaled the emergence of a menacing creature. As anticipated, within seconds, a ghost-eyed demon spider with eight menacing legs emerged from the portal. Remarkably, it was a level 15 creature. Yehu's father made the ultimate sacrifice in order to buy time to face the creature, as there was no chance to escape. Despite his father's level being only at 10, his punch barely made a dent in the spider monster. Instead, he was struck by the monster's attack and left immobilized. Witnessing this, Yehu's mother attempted to intervene, but was tragically blown away by the demon spider's assault. Unbeknownst to the creature, one of its legs was pierced by an arrow, courtesy of Yun Fei, who had been observing the scene. Yehu, trembling with fear, realized that his worst nightmare had become a reality. He felt overwhelmed by the vast difference in power between himself 
and the spider demon. In the midst of battle, Yunfei, despite her best efforts, was overpowered by the monster and sustained a wound on her left shoulder. She was then targeted by an execution attack, rendering her immobile. With no other options, Yehu redirected the attack towards his younger sister, resulting in the demonic spider's sharp legs piercing through his body. In a state of near death, Yehu signaled for his sister to flee before it was too late, with only 1% of HP remaining. A sudden notification appeared, indicating that the XP points he had accumulated had met the requirements, thus activating the king system. Since the current host was immobile, the system would randomly select an account with the host name Emperor Qian. Meanwhile, Yan Fei, who was attempting to flee, was unexpectedly ambushed by the spider demon. Despite Ye Hu granting her time to escape, it was now inevitable as the creature stood right before her eyes. However, amidst the despair and loss of direction, an attack emerged that could potentially defeat the monster. At this moment, Yun Fei, who was positioned behind Ye Hu, struggled to believe that the powerful individual emitting flames from his body was none other than his own elder brother, Ye Hu. The arachnid creature found itself perplexed by the ability of this low-level opponent to strike back, fueling its anger and determination to attack Ye Hu. However, Ye Hu swiftly evaded with his newfound strength, conjuring a flaming sword with his enhanced abilities. His powerful strike successfully severed both legs of the monster. Unfortunately, Ye Hu's frail body could only withstand the power for a mere three seconds as he struggled to contain the overwhelming energy. A golden flame-like aura enveloped him, marking the time limit of his transformation. With his blood constricted by the energy, Ye Hu knew he had to defeat the monster quickly before the transformation ended or face certain death. As the spider demon attempted to flee, deeming the battle with a lowly level three human beneath it, the flames surrounding it halted its escape. Yahoo's words, if you wish to depart, then proceed to the depths of damnation, caused the spider demon to perspire profusely, having witnessed Yahoo's formidable strength moments ago. The ground trembled under the weighty footsteps of several elite fighters, seemingly converging upon the monstrous creature. Do not venture forth, for it shall lead to your demise, Yahoo exclaimed with great volume. However, their heedlessness prevailed as these words emanated from a mere level three individual. Naturally, they failed to launch a single attack, for their bodies had become ensnared within a web, rendering them immobile. Not only did the web possess the ability to absorb experience points from its victims, but this particular incident caused the demon spider to ascend three levels instantaneously, having absorbed the experience points from the previous fighters. The demon spider's power surged exponentially, leaving Yahoo feeling despondent. After enduring an assault from the creature, he was forced to collapse, only to be met with a system notification proclaiming the readiness of the ultimate red storm. Rising mercilessly, Yahoo unleashed a devastating technique known as the ultimate red storm, his body ablaze with the ferocious fire that currently engulfed him. The arachnid detected that the assault was no ordinary fire. It carried a potent king power. As it perished, the creature mentioned Master Chiang, whose appearance remained a mystery. The demon spider had to be incinerated completely, leaving no trace in the battleground. Whoever vanquished the demon ghost spider earned 20,000 XP points, but due to exhaustion, they had to collect the item drop first. Yahoo was now unconscious, transported to the system room. His body, severely wounded from the previous battle, was automatically healed using the 10,000 XP points he had acquired earlier. However, he was disoriented as his new system room was vastly different from the previous one, resembling a vast galaxy. Each player had their own system room since ancient times on Earth to monitor attributes and store equipment. Yehu was bewildered by the changes in his new system room discovering the true identity of the powerful figure as King Qian Emperor at max level. It was revealed that he was in the King's account system. The account system is designed for numerous game planes, allowing owners to utilize their XP points to unlock additional King accounts gradually. Upon reaching level 10 and accumulating enough XP points, the Qian Emperor account is automatically activated. For the past three years, Yehu has been unable to level up due to the system absorbing all his earned XP points. However, 
This is no longer a concern as Yahoo now aims to level up quickly to unlock more King accounts. Despite finally leveling up with the remaining 10,000 points, Yahoo was still at level 3, feeling frustrated. Suddenly he woke up in the hospital with his previously injured body fully recovered, thanks to the system's assistance. Unfortunately, the 10,000 points were a significant loss for him. In the room, Yunfei and his mother were arguing with the doctor about the high medical expenses incurred due to their injuries from elite monsters. The doctor emphasized the necessity of long-term treatment with special medicine to prevent any fatal consequences from the poisoning. The doctor also mentioned that Yunfei's father and another man are not as fortunate as Yunfei and her mother. It is estimated that Yunfei's father has only about a month to live, while Yehu's condition is being assessed to determine the severity of his injury. The doctor stated that Yehu may not survive for more than a week. Upon hearing this news, Yunfei couldn't hold back her tears, especially considering the expensive medical expenses. She urged her mother to sell their house immediately in order to cover the costs. However, Yehu rejected her mother's decision to sell the house. It was quite surprising for the doctor, as well as Yunfei's mother and sister, to see Yehu present with an unharmed body, considering his previous serious injury. Yehu made a remarkable recovery in the hospital, surprising the doctor. Despite being the most severely injured among his family members, he was now back on his feet. The focus shifted to the urgent need for further treatment for the other three family members, with a hefty bill of 300,000 yuan looming over them. Yehu stepped up, vowing to raise the funds within an hour. The doctor, though skeptical of this ambitious promise, decided to give him a chance. Still, he couldn't shake off his disbelief at how a level 3 boy could heal faster than a level 60 human he had encountered in the past. Despite Yahoo's efforts to gather money from his savings and earnings from defeating the previous Dimension Spider, the required amount remained out of reach. Desperate for a quick solution, he decided to sell his most valuable possession, a rare level 15 magic crystal obtained from the Demon Spider. Determined to secure a fair price, he headed to the black market where trading was unrestricted by levels. Until he reached the entrance of the black market, which was now being guarded by two imposing men, Yehu was determined to enter. However, the guard stopped him, as they knew this was not a place for children to play. Yehu explained that he had come to sell high-quality goods, not to play with toys. Dismissing his explanation, the guards bluntly stated, We don't accept children's toys here. Just as Yehu was about to be kicked out, an elderly man, who seemed to hold an important position in the black market, appeared. The old man approached and inquired about the goods Yehu had mentioned earlier. Yehu promptly showed him the goods. The old man apologized for the guard's rudeness and granted Yehu access to the black market. This underground trading club was unique as it was designed to resemble a bar. This created a sense of awe in young Yehu, far different from what he had imagined. On his way to meet the old man, Yehu was intercepted by two unfamiliar men. Clearly, this was an attempt to intimidate him, as they assumed he was a low-level individual seeking to sell goods. However, before they could inspect his belongings, a bodyguard intervened. The bodyguard announced that Yehu was a guest of Mr. Lee, causing the two would-be robbers to tremble at the mere mention of his name. Mr. Li himself was a representative of the Huang Zheng Group, a prominent organization. Finally, Yahu arrived at the VIP room where Mr. Li awaited him. Without wasting any time, Mr. Li initiated a business conversation with Yahu, leading to a negotiation session. Despite being at level 3, Yahu was a clever individual who declined Mr. Li's offer. Mr. Li offered 100,000 yuan for the magic crystal item, but Ye Hu, seeing through the deception, stated that he could sell his 200,000 magic crystals elsewhere. As he left the venue, he was stopped by two imposing bodyguards, revealing Mr. Li's scheme. Despite being able to use the power of the Qian King to fight and escape, Ye Hu chose not to take unnecessary risks. Amidst the chaos, a masked bodyguard and a woman named Miss Mo Kier from the Hanmo group appeared. Miss Mo Kier offered a magic crystal house for 300,000 yuan, leaving Mr. Lee speechless. Miss Mo's true intention was to embarrass Mr. Lee due to a long-standing dispute between the Hanmo group and the Huang Zheng group. 
After the woman left, Yehu received the promised money and went back to the hospital to visit his unconscious father. Suddenly, the hospital director, an obnoxious bald man, appeared. Upon learning that Yehu's family could not afford the medical expenses, he arrived at the hospital. The man reprimanded the doctor for allowing them to stay in the hospital. The doctor mentioned that the family's son would bring money within an hour, but the director, upon hearing this, physically attacked the doctor as it was unrealistic for a child of that age to gather such funds. Subsequently, the director moved towards the patient with the intention of removing the oxygen mask. Yunfei intervened, objecting to the director's harsh actions, stating that the hospital was not meant for individuals of lower social status. In a fit of rage, Yehu kicked the door in response to the man who had harmed his family. The director, who had a firm grip on Yehu's coat, accidentally set his hand on fire. Panicked, he ran, while shouting for help to extinguish the flames that burned his hand. The director, who had a tight grip on Yehu's coat, accidentally set his hand on fire. In a panic, he ran while shouting for someone to put out the flames that were burning his hand. After the incident, he assured the doctor that he had the money and was willing to pay extra for his treatment. The doctor, annoyed by the director's rude and arrogant behavior, felt that he deserved the mishap. Yehu then paid for his family's medical expenses and approached Yunfei, who appeared fragile due to his inability to care for his parents. Yunfei expressed his intention to participate in the upcoming dungeon competition at school, where the winner would receive a bonus of approximately 500,000 yuan. However, due to his current condition, he was unable to do so. Upon hearing Yunfei's predicament, Yehu promised to help him participate in the competition. The dungeon competition garnered great enthusiasm from the students gathered in the courtyard, as it was a rare event with a high bonus prize. Miss Mo's presence heightened the students' excitement at the welcoming ceremony and the ultimate prize of joining the prestigious Hanmo group known as the Raid Team added to the anticipation. This group was considered the top ten team in the dungeon, making it the most coveted reward among the students. However, Yehu's motivation for entering the competition was solely for monetary gain. The annual competition this time took place in the Forest of Shadows, which was teeming with level 5 monsters, making it the highest level dungeon in their school. Rumor had it that this dungeon had never been cleared by any student, with even the lowest level monsters being above level 5, and the final boss being a level 10 elite monster known as the Shadow Dryad. Despite the challenges, students knew that they wouldn't face real danger as their physical bodies were safe elsewhere. The competition featured two main mechanisms for completing the dungeon, PvP and PvE. Teams of up to five people were allowed, and individual points were earned by killing monsters and defeating other teams. With the stage set, the competition officially commenced. Just before the commencement of the competition, the students gathered to search for potential team members. Yahoo, however, was shunned by his peers and considered unworthy to join any team. Despite being the subject of mockery, Yehu had no desire to be a part of any team as he believed they would only hinder him. Without hesitation, Yehu proceeded to the registration area alone. Shortly after, Luo Feng arrived with his group, hoping to recruit Yehu. However, Luo Feng demanded that Yehu bark like a dog on the ground as a condition for joining his team. Yehu outsmarted Luo Feng, leading to a confrontation between the two. An altercation was narrowly avoided when the teacher in charge intervened. After issuing a warning to Yehu threatening to behead him inside the dungeon, Luo Feng exited. Once the situation was resolved, Yehu successfully registered as the sole participant in the dungeon competition this time. Additionally, he became the first person to enter the dungeon, not too far from his current location. Miss Mo Keir seemed to recall their previous encounter. She was intrigued by how a mere level three player like him had the audacity to venture into the black market alone, and now he was entering the dungeon solo. After exchanging pleasantries, the students proceeded into the dungeon. They were randomly assigned to predetermined locations to prevent any clashes between teams. In order to avoid unnecessary conflicts, Yahoo wasted no time in swiftly eliminating any passing monsters upon his arrival. However, due to the vast size of the dungeon and the scattered nature of the monsters, 
It would be both time-consuming and inefficient for him to continue in this manner, especially since he was alone. Therefore, in his pursuit of victory in the competition, Yehu decided to search for higher-level monsters within the dungeon. Lacking a clear direction, he followed a small spider monster that eventually led him to the lair of the mother spider. Amongst the webs hanging from the trees, he noticed a woman named Ruin Tian Tian, who happened to be a close friend of Yun Fei. Ye Hu made the decision to assist the woman. After successfully rescuing Ruin Tian Tian with his firepower, a mother spider named Level 8 Red Spider emerged. In order to avoid the poison released by the creature, they both ended up falling into the net trap set by the creature, which promptly ensnared them. Upon seeing the monster right in front of them, the spider monster surprisingly departed. The spider left Ruin so that he could breathe easier. But Yehu explained that the red spider's habit was to lay eggs on the captured person's body for reproduction, with the creature returning when the time was right. Unable to use their hands, they resorted to breaking the spider web with their mouths. In short, they managed to escape the entangled spider web before the creature returned. Yehu instructed Ruin to go back with her team while he dealt with the red spider. Despite being aware of his status as a level 3 trash, Yehu was determined to confront the monster and release his pent-up anger after being trapped with Ruin. Both of them managed to survive and unexpectedly encountered the Red Spider Mother at level 8. Yehu heard Ruin continuously hurling insults and derogatory remarks, stating that he didn't care if Ruin wanted to escape or not, but not to prevent him from fighting. Yehu was already gearing up to unleash the power of the Qian King. Meanwhile, Ruin ultimately chose to stay after witnessing the immense power emanating from Yehu's body. Yehu easily dodged the sudden attack from the unsheathed spider with a leap, using his flaming sword to deliver a vertical slash that extended the attack's impact towards the spider. The powerful strike instantly killed the spider monster. Ruin was taken aback by the man's strength, suspecting that he had some ability to conceal his level. By defeating the spider monster, Yehu gained 1,000 points, while Ruan, who did not participate in the fight, received 500 points. This piqued Ruan's interest in Yehu even further. Furthermore, Yehu acquired several valuable items that had dropped from the spider's body, which could potentially prove useful in the future. Shortly after, a team approached Yehu, led by Li Yong, who had apparently accumulated 3,000 points in the competition. It was revealed that Li Yong's team had used Ruan as bait to lure in the mother spider, their primary target. During their conversation, one of the team members stumbled upon a charred corpse, which turned out to be the spider they had been hunting. Observing this, Li Yong questioned Ruan about his involvement in killing the monster. Ruan confirmed that he had indeed slain the red spider after teaming up with Yahoo. However, due to Yahoo's reputation as a mediocre student who struggled to level up, the team members were skeptical and inclined to believe that it was Ruin who had dealt the final blow to the creature. However, in the midst of their argument, a low rumbling noise emanated from the opposite direction. They immediately recognized it as the sound of a Tyrannosaurus, one of the rare and formidable elite monsters. The reward for slaying this creature was a whopping 5,000 points. Li Yong and his team swiftly made up their minds to rush towards the location where the roar originated. Are you really planning to confront the Tyrannosaurus? Yehu questioned them, warning that they would be risking their lives with their current abilities. These words ignited anger within Li Yong, almost leading to a heated dispute. However, since their main objective was to hunt down the Tyrannosaurus, they ultimately set aside their differences and agreed to address the dispute once the monster was defeated. What are you implying? I'm merely stating that with your current strength, you would be nothing more than a mere snack for the Tyrannosaurus, Yehu remarked in a casual tone, provoking Li Yong to the point of almost attacking him. After Li Yong stormed off, he proceeded to instruct Ruan on how to navigate through the forest and eliminate smaller monsters. However, it was evident that his true intention was not to engage in such trivial battles as defeating small monsters would not secure victory in the competition. His current goal was to observe Lee's team as they battled the Tyrannosaurus, only intervening when the opportune moment arose. At the spot where the Tyrannosaurus monster lurked behind the bushes, Lee Yong and his team caught sight of it. 
The uncertainty of whether they could overpower the creature with their combined strength lingered in the air. Its menacing presence left them breathless, yet Li Yong, the courageous and resolute young man, remained confident that he had nothing to fear with his current abilities. As they advanced towards the monster in unison, they failed to realize one crucial detail from the start. Trapped in the middle of the path, one of the men noticed that the Tyrannosaurus demon should have displayed black and green hues, but the one before them was black and red, a sign of its savage nature. Soon after facing the beast's ferocity, it swiftly annihilated Li Yong's companions, leaving him alone. Confronted with the grim reality, Li Yong understood that the creature before him was beyond his capabilities, despite his agility and speed. Desperate to escape the relentless pursuit of the Tyrannosaurus, Li Yong decided to redirect its wrath towards others, targeting Ye Hu and Ruan, who were closest to him at that moment. Despite being breathless, Li Yong continued to flee from the Tyrannosaurus. He eventually located Ye Hu and Ruan, wasting no time as he promptly pushed Ruan forward to take his place when facing the demon's wrath. Ruan, who was in a state of panic, immediately launched an attack on the monster with his abilities, but unfortunately missed the Tyrannosaurus. Due to Ruan's feeble attempt, the monster's anger shifted from Li Yong to Ruan. Meanwhile, Li Yong, having narrowly escaped the Tyrannosaurus, decided to depart and leave the creature to the other two. Utilizing his skill of disappearance, Li Yong's form gradually dissipated into the air. However, Ye Hu, unwilling to let him evade responsibility, easily caught hold of Li Yong's invisible body. As Li Yong struggled in Ye Hu's grasp, he questioned how he could still be seen. Ye Hu explained that the Tyrannosaurus demon had grown more aggressive, warning that if the battle persisted, they would all meet their demise at the hands of the monster. He displayed a slight smile and demonstrated his extraordinary strength right before Li Yong's eyes. Utilizing his exceptional skills, he struck the ground, causing it to tremble and release a fiery blaze that spread towards the monstrous Tyrannosaurus. Li Yong bore witness to the immense power unleashed by Ye Hu. Instead of being shameless, Li Yong extended an invitation for him to join forces and defeat the Tyrannosaurus monster together. However, all of Li Yong's requests would be conveyed through Ruan, whom he had previously mentioned. Despite capturing and pleading with Ruan to assist in persuading Ye Hu to form a team, Ruan refused to do so. Consequently, the two of them departed, continuing their battle with the delayed monster. Li Yong, who was unwilling to accept the prior incident, retrieved a poison dagger with the intention of stabbing Ye Hu from behind. Li Yong attempted to attack Ye Hu with a poison dagger, but Ye Hu effortlessly countered the attack with a fiery blade. Li Yong met his end as the hot sword pierced his skin, dropping valuable items upon his defeat. The battle with the Tyrannosaurus continued, with Ye Hu taking the lead in attacking and depleting the monster's HP. Despite having the power to finish off the monster easily, dungeon rules required him to defeat monsters in a state of anger or ferocity. To comply with the rules, Ye Hu enlisted Ruan's help to calm the Tyrannosaurus demon once its HP dropped below 20. The strategy was successful transforming the once ferocious demon into a small and cute creature. Upon witnessing the adorableness of the Tyrannosaurus this time, Ruin felt the urge to keep it as a pet. However, in Ye Hu's perspective, this creature was merely a means to gain more points and edge closer to victory in the competition. Despite the creature's cute and innocent facade, Ye Hu paid no attention to it and swiftly defeated the Tyrannosaurus, earning himself 5,000 points. Ruin also received half of Yehu's points. Yehu's total experience points reached 50,000, a significant increase from his previous battles. He decided to invest these points in purchasing the Eye of Truth special skill, which would aid him in locating hidden dungeon bosses. Upon exiting the system space, a mysterious egg with intricate patterns appeared as a drop item. While the egg could be hatched, incubated, or used in cooking, Yehu had no use for it and decided to give it to Ruin. Meanwhile, outside the dungeon area and system space, another mysterious egg appeared. Miss Mo, who was outside the dungeon area, became intrigued by Ye Hu after witnessing his fight and defeating a Tyrannosaurus demon. She was surprised that someone at level 3 could handle such a challenge. 
She then called the principal to inquire about Yehu's accumulated points in the dungeon. The principal revealed that Yehu was unable to level up, a fact only known to Miss Mo. The principal explained that there was a student who was initially a genius, starting at level three upon entering the school. But his level remained stagnant for three years without any known reason. This revelation piqued Miss Mo's curiosity even more about Yehu. The principal accessed the basement system to check Yehu's points and was astonished to find him in the top three of the ranking table. Miss Mo suggested announcing the dungeon rankings and sharing the player's information and locations, which would lead to competition and potential conflicts among the students. As the sponsor of the competition, Miss Mo convinced the principal to agree to her proposal. Xu Tian, realizing he had no way out, made a bold move to attack Yahoo with his fists. However, it proved to be a futile attempt as Yahoo had already secured victory from the start of the fight. With Xu Tian and his comrades defeated by Yahoo, Yahoo's ranking soared to the top of the dungeon leaderboard. The dungeon map displayed only three remaining teams in the competition, including the Luofang team, who had formed an alliance with the Zhang Ye team. Their strategy was to encircle Yahoo, but for now, they were merely observing and had not yet initiated any action. Ye Hu discovered that he had a deep understanding of Luo Feng's personality. Despite appearing awkward in his actions, Luo Feng was actually a compassionate individual. It turned out that Luo Feng had been observing Ye Hu from a distance and was about to launch an attack when Ruin was caught off guard. Ye Hu then utilized his latest skill to locate the hidden dungeon boss. However, with the assistance of the Eye of Truth, he quickly found the secret whereabouts of the final boss, Shadow Dryad. After successfully pinpointing the location, Yehu hurried to the spot where the monster had left Ruan, a fellow player who had just learned about Yehu's achievement. However, Luo Feng's swift movements caused him to lose track of Yehu's whereabouts, leaving him puzzled. Consequently, Luo Feng and his team promptly changed their objective and focused on surrounding and capturing Ruan, who was still in close proximity. In order to grab Yehu's attention, Ruan was apprehended by Luo Feng's team, and they interrogated her about her sudden disappearance. Regrettably, Ruan was unaware of her whereabouts when a massive shadow dryad suddenly emerged, enveloping the area with its presence. The figure's roar trapped the three members of Luo Feng, signaling the arrival of the dungeon boss, Shadow Dryad. Without hesitation, Luo Feng's dungeon troops, now joined by Zhang Ye's team of ten, launched an attack on the Shadow Dryad, utilizing their best skills. Their continuous onslaught proved effective in draining the monster's blood. However, their success was short-lived as the dungeon boss entered petrification mode, rendering all target attacks ineffective. To make matters worse, numerous little dryads suddenly ambushed Luo Feng's team. Despite the odds, the team leader urged them to continue the fight, but Zhang Ye's team chose to flee, leaving Luo Feng behind. Meanwhile, Ye Hu made his entrance, rescuing Ruan from a perilous situation. It was revealed that Ruan had been used as bait to lure Luofeng's team, while Ye Hu orchestrated the entire scheme from a distance, leading them to the dungeon boss. Luofeng, once again feeling deceived by Ye Hu, became even more enraged upon learning the truth. Despite being occupied with battling monsters, Luofeng ultimately commanded team leader Zhang Ye to eliminate Ye Hu. However, to their dismay, they were merely helpless victims in the face of Yehu's fiery power as he swiftly dispatched them. After slaying numerous monsters, the furious Luo Feng approached Yehu with the intention of attacking him. Yet, with a mere gentle slap, Luo Feng was instantly sent flying. At this point, Luo Feng expressed his disbelief that Yehu could single handedly defeat the boss monster before his very eyes. However, Ye Hu was determined to showcase his overwhelming power. Utilizing the power of fire, he conjured hot needles in the air, which rained down and pierced the bodies of the monsters, causing instant death. Not only that, but his indiscriminate attacks also struck Luo Feng's remaining team in the midst of the battlefield. With the demise of the little dryad, the dungeon boss absorbed the energy essence of the scattered monsters causing its previously cracking body to suddenly enter shadow state mode. Depicted the shadow state mode in a more compact yet potent form, serving as the ultimate manifestation of the shadow dryad. 
It seemed as though the speed of sound was trailing closely behind Yahoo, surpassing the capabilities of a level 10 boss. Despite its diminished size, the shadow state mode exhibited heightened agility. Yahoo found himself effortlessly propelled into the air, followed by a swift and precise attack aimed directly at him. Meanwhile, Luo Feng, who observed the battle, couldn't help but laugh at Yehu's audacity in wanting to face the creature alone, despite his inflated ego. Unfazed by Luo's words, Yehu once again revealed his prowess. In a mere instant, he positioned himself behind the boss monster, launching a series of rapid and imperceptible strikes that proved fatal. With this remarkable feat, Yehu became the first assassin in the Shadow Force dungeon to slay the boss monster, earning 10,000 points. This marked the conclusion of the dungeon competition, akin to opening the gateway to the real world. Witnessing Ye Hu's ability to single-handedly defeat the boss monster, Luo Feng, who had previously underestimated him, now knelt before him, expressing his apologies and requesting to rekindle their former brotherly bond. Ye Hu made it clear that shameless Luo Feng did not deserve to be considered his younger brother. Despite Luo Feng's attempt to escape using a teleportation paper, Yehu's attack from a distance ended his life before he could enter the gate. As they defeated the boss monster, Yehu shared rare drop items with Ruan, who could make better use of them. However, an earthquake and a warning signaled a serious problem in the dungeon, indicating an abnormal event that could be linked to the real world. A typical scenario where abnormal monsters emerge in the dungeon, forcing the characters to confront them in order to escape. Yehu and Ruan find themselves in a dire situation due to an external problem, which poses a threat to their chances of leaving the dungeon. Despite facing difficulties, Yehu selflessly assists Ruan, as he had already considered her an integral part of their team within the dungeon. To ensure her safety, Yehu propels her towards the gate, which promptly seals shut once the time limit expires. Meanwhile, Yehu remains inside the dungeon and employs a teleportation scroll to transport his duplicate body to his original body outside. Anticipating that Ruin lacks such a scroll, Yehu had made the decision to throw her earlier. Upon exiting, he materializes in front of the dungeon entrance, only to discover that the gate has been destroyed, indicating a problem. Not far away, Ruin, who believed Yehu was still trapped, continues to weep until she realizes that he is indeed alive. In the dungeon, she was quite talkative, but in the real world, her true nature was incredibly shy. Three soldiers, armed and in full uniform, appeared, and it was evident that they belonged to the notorious Black Tiger Mercenary Group. This group had a history of violence, having killed people in the safe zone five years ago. Yahoo was puzzled as to why these criminals were in his school. However, it was clear that these warriors had no intention of letting Yahoo and Ruin go especially after one of them showed interest in Ruin's appearance. Yehu confidently stated that the three soldiers were already under his control, angering them. Despite their higher levels, Yehu swiftly defeated two of them, leaving one alive for interrogation. The guard was shocked at Yehu's strength and offered information in exchange for his life. However, Yehu, unfazed, eliminated the guard, and learned that the Black Tigers were targeting Miss Mo Kier from the Han Mo group on orders from the Huang Zhang group. The Huang Zhang group provided the leader of the Black Tigers with a valuable item to restrict the bodyguard's access to Miss Mo Kier. Upon obtaining crucial information, Yehu extracted the fiery sword embedded in the soldier's body, causing the soldier to be on the brink of death. In an attempt to save him, Yehu offered a blood boosting drink, but to no avail. It was evident that Yahoo had never promised to spare the soldier's life, leading to the soldier's demise as he succumbed to the burning effect still lingering in his body. Following the school blockade incident, Yahoo promptly rose to search for a secure hiding spot. He was determined to rescue the lives of those in the school, especially Miss Mo Kier, who still owed him a debt from their previous dungeon competition. While attending to the safety of the school occupants, Yehu noticed two Black Tiger Group soldiers patrolling nearby. With an average level of 15 and superior numbers, the teachers, ranging from levels 10 to 22, stood no chance against them. Yehu needed 20 minutes for his eye skills to reactivate in order to assess the situation. He decided to gather more information from the soldiers. Upon further investigation, 
he discovered a room where students were being held captive by a level 25 man, who appeared to be a teacher named Lee. It was evident that Lee was being victimized and would soon be subjected to a violent act by the Black Tiger Captain. Luo Feng, among the prisoners, observed the mistreatment of his beloved teacher, Teacher Lee, by the captain. Witnessing this, he bravely attempted to defend her, only to be overpowered by the captain. Despite the captain's initial aggression, he recognized Luo Feng's courage and offered him a position as a subordinate, on the condition that he eliminate the captive students. Refusing to join the captain's group of thugs, Luo Feng defiantly confronted him, only to realize the vast difference in their abilities. As the captain prepared to strike, a deadly spider dispatched him, courtesy of Ye Hu, who remained undetected by the soldiers. The captain, who was struck down by him, did not remain silent. They launched a simultaneous attack on Ye Hu. However, they were merely stepping stones for him to elevate his level. After a brief skirmish, the detained students could finally breathe a sigh of relief as Ye Hu arrived and successfully eliminated the Black Tiger warrior guarding them. The witness to Luo Feng's heroism declared that he was now eligible to become his younger brother, and Luo Feng gladly accepted Ye Hu's offer. Eager to become stronger, Luo Feng knelt before Ye Hu, and someone handed him a knife from the floor, which he intended to use to execute the surviving captain. With the Black Tiger captain's demise at Luo Feng's hands, his level immediately skyrocketed by five, reaching level ten. Overwhelmed by this incredible feat, Luo Feng once again bowed before Ye Hu, pledging his unwavering loyalty. After rescuing the prisoners, the cooldown time for his skill had indeed expired. However, he promptly activated his skill to gather information about the ongoing conditions in the school. Through his skill, he discovered that many teachers and students were being held in the gymnasium. Although the number of guards was not substantial, the warehouse area seemed like a suitable hiding place due to the absence of patrols or guards. There were two masters in the building who were level 40, along with a level 45 master in the break room. It was clear that the level 45 master was the leader of the Black Tiger group, as he had level 20 bodyguards surrounding him. Additionally, there was another level 40 master in the school parking lot. Yahoo, who was aware of the current situation, instructed Luo Feng to quickly bring everyone indoors to the warehouse area for safety. As a precaution, Luo Feng was also given spider fangs to defend against any potential threats. Meanwhile, Ye Hu headed towards the parking lot where the level 40 Black Tiger members were located. He still lacked the confidence to rescue Miss Mo Kier, who was being guarded by the level 45 leader. Furthermore, he was uncertain if he could defeat the level 40 boss. In Ye Hu's system room, he had accumulated a total of 50,000 X points. He decided to increase his link level, which was currently at level 21. This link level represented his connection with King Qian's account and would rise whenever he utilized King Qian's enhanced power. After a while, Ye Hu's full power manifested, resulting in him successfully leveling up to level 4. Once he reached level 5 and his link level reached level 20, he would unlock special talents. He planned to choose defensive talents that he believed would be beneficial in battle. The soldiers were discussing a remote location when suddenly one of them was ambushed by Yehu's flames. Despite dodging bullets from other soldiers, Yehu managed to extinguish the flames. A bomb dropped from the air and exploded near them, thrown by Big Gun, the deputy commander of the Black Tiger with a level 40. Surprisingly, the explosion had no effect on Yehu, who redirected the flames towards the surrounding soldiers. Big Gun, witnessing this, was astonished by Yehu's survival skills against such a powerful explosion. Yehu's defensive talent allowed him to withstand the blast easily. As the battle continued, Yehu and Big Gun realized their physical differences. Big Gun's strong physical strength and equipment, including a shield that could ignore damage, made the battle challenging. However, Yehu's skills and tricks enabled him to outsmart Big Gun. Despite being repeatedly injured, Yehu managed to drain Big Gun's blood by getting closer to him and using his latest defense skill, deflagration. Yehu's defensive skill not only served as a means of protection, but also allowed him to use fire to shoot at enemies, burn targets, and weaken their equipment resistance. After surviving an attack from Big Gun, all of Big Gun's equipment suddenly failed, 
due to Yahoo's deflagration skill. Despite Big Gun's attempt to retaliate by throwing a bomb, Yahoo's agility outsmarted him, leading to Big Gun's resignation as deputy commander. Big Gun, cornered and apologetic, claimed to be a mere worker following orders from his commander. However, in exchange for his life, he demanded valuable items and ended up falling into a trap set by Yahoo. As Big Gun plotted his revenge, Yahoo swiftly eliminated him, earning 30,000 exp points and a level 40 dungeon key outside the safe zone. Upon later reflection, the item he had obtained would prove useful, but the true prize lay within the treasure chest before him, containing even more valuable treasures. Among them were ancient, rare magic crystals that could be exchanged for experience points. Upon entering the system room and trading in ten of these ancient magic crystals, he received 100,000 experience points, bringing his total to 130,000 X points. Despite his initial hesitation, following the system's suggestion, Yahoo ultimately made the decision to create a new King account. The item currently present in his system room, as recommended by the system, has decided to open a new King account. By spending 100,000 experience points, Yahoo acquired the King account named Moss. Moss is a mad scientist from another world, known for causing destruction through his talents and inventions. Despite not being a fighter-type king, Moss has risen to the top of the world with his innovative creations. Moss's skills are not fixed and will change based on the title name. Currently, the title opened is Master of Engineering. Yahoo can upgrade the skill or title up to level 10, making him intrigued by Crazy Moss, a support type with decent skills. Shortly after, Xi'an King's main account on his body switched to Crazy Moss, and a flying robot named Weiss appeared, claiming to be Crazy Moss's creation. Weiss, an interdimensional artificial intelligence, will now accompany Ye Hu to teach him how to conquer the world. Despite Weiss's intentions, Ye Hu has no interest in such endeavors. Weiss explains that as an engineering master, Ye Hu can combine objects related to engineering and machinery to create new items. There are limitations to the parsing and combining abilities of objects, specifically existing objects, up to a level twice as high as their current level. With two king accounts at his disposal, Yehu can interchange between the two accounts and modify them accordingly. Yehu, who is currently gearing up to rescue Miss Mo Kier, emerges from his system room. Inside the room, we witness Miss Mo being held captive by the Black Tiger Group, along with the individual responsible for her abduction a level 45 fighter named Maru. Miss Mo's ease of capture can be attributed to the powerful bodyguard's mask turning to stone after being struck by the Medusa item provided by the Huang Zheng group to Maru. The Black Tiger group, driven by greed, presents an offer to Miss Mo's group, demanding 50 million yuan from Huang Zheng. Maru proposes that if Miss Mo matches the amount, he will release her. However, it appears that Miss Mo is unwilling to accept Maru's unreasonable terms. Consequently, Maru decides to proceed with his initial plan of eliminating Miss Mo Kier using his dual swords. Miss Mo Kier's refusal of Maru's offer led to his immediate attempt to carry out his goal of killing her with his two swords. However, Maru's actions were thwarted by the sudden appearance of a barrier, which was none other than the power of Yehu. Yehu arrived just in time to collect the prize money from the previous competition, along with an additional $10 million if he could save Miss Mo Kier from the kidnapping she had endured. Meanwhile, Nana, witnessing the scene, intervened by attacking Maru with all her might to prevent him from harming Miss Mo Kier. Despite Maru's attempts to retaliate, Yehu's defensive skills allowed him to only lose 20 GP. On the other side of the barrier, Miss Mo Kier expressed her concern for Ye Hu's safety, insisting that he did not need to risk his life to save her. She also provided him with instructions on how to escape the situation. Ye Hu, determined to protect Miss Mo Kier, reassured her that he would not let anything happen to her. He made it clear that he was not seeking glory or rewards, but rather he was driven by his desire to ensure her safety. The soldiers attempting to dismantle Miss Mo Kier's protective barrier were immediately astonished. Despite depleting the barrier's energy with their attacks, it inexplicably replenished itself. They deemed this occurrence impossible. Maru, who had just realized the peculiarity, 
noticed that something was amiss with the four boys standing alongside Yehu. She speculated that they were somehow concealing their true abilities. As the battle raged on, Maru hurled numerous grenades at them, boldly dismissing them as mere toys in front of her protective shield. However, when one of the grenades detonated, it became evident that it was no ordinary explosive. This particular grenade contained a spider web that gradually drained an individual's HP, a creation of Yehu's engineering skill known as the Sticky Bomb. Crafted from ghostly spider silk, this combined weapon could control the target's movements for ten minutes and inflict continuous damage. Despite being ensnared by the spider web, Maru managed to break free, revealing her true strength as the guardian. With a powerful strike, Yahoo's HP was reduced by 50% due to the effects of the red and blue buff. His speed and strength surged dramatically, yet his slash attack was effortlessly evaded. The onslaught continued until he found himself trapped with a mere 10 GP remaining. The protagonist activates the HP lock, which grants him invulnerability for 20 seconds. He then switches to King Chian mode, but his fire abilities have little effect on Maru. However, this is just the beginning of Yahoo's actions. Suddenly, a demon weapon appears and starts shooting at Maru. It is revealed that the weapon belongs to Yahoo's subordinate, Big Gun, and it has been modified with unlimited ammunition. The weapon can automatically lock onto targets in front of Yahoo. Although Maru initially struggles against the weapon, he eventually overcomes it with his speed. However, this attack was just a distraction. Yehu takes advantage of the opportunity to stab Maru from behind with a poison-coated dagger, instantly finishing him off. In a desperate move, Maru activates a rare item called the Guardian Shield, which grants him immunity to one-hit kill effects and restores 30% of his HP. Maru is feeling extremely distressed due to the exorbitant cost of the item. Maru, now more enraged than ever, successfully defeated Yehu, who was in HP lock mode that had expired. Maru was taken aback by the unexpected strength of the opponent he faced. As a last resort, Maru unleashed a powerful liquid into his body, known as Lightning Beast Blood, transforming him into a thundering beast and significantly boosting all his stats for five minutes. This marked Yehu's first encounter with a high-level fighter, where not only tactics could be altered, but also a wide array of tools and combat items made it increasingly challenging to anticipate the outcome of the battle presented a chilling scene as Maru, who had undergone a transformation, confronted Yehu in a duel. However, Maru was taken aback when Yehu expressed his unwillingness to fight any longer. This left Maru even more furious, as she had already expended her most valuable asset, the ace, and felt that she was unable to do anything against Yehu. Despite Maru's anger, Yehu remained calm and prepared to unleash his full strength. To Maru's surprise, Yehu had a plan in place, as Miss Mo's bodyguard successfully intercepted Maru's attack. Yehu overheard Maru discussing the petrified masked man and the chest containing an antidote to reverse the petrification. With this knowledge, Yehu headed towards the ongoing fight, where the combined attacks of the two masked men proved ineffective against Yehu and Miss Mo's bodyguard. With ease, Yahoo's powerful punches sent Maru crashing into the wall. Miss Mo's bodyguard had executed a decisive blow, leaving Yahoo in awe of the immense power displayed by the two men. Shortly after Miss Mo Kier's arrival, she explained to Yahoo why she chose to fight the bodyguard instead of removing the rock effect, putting herself in danger. Yahoo expressed his desire to gain valuable experience by fighting, as money couldn't buy that kind of experience. Miss Mo Kier was taken aback by Yahoo's unique perspective, as he was unlike anyone she had ever met. Returning to the topic, Yahoo requested a bonus of 10 million yuan for saving Miss Mo's life, in addition to the 500 million yuan prize for winning the dungeon competition, which Miss Mo would cover. The conversation then shifted to Maru, who was incapacitated but not dead, and would deliver the final blow to Yahoo before his demise. Maru warned of monsters gathering outside the safe zone predicting its eventual destruction. Miss Mo offered Yehu a spot on the Mo team, the attack team of the Hanmo cause. Despite Yehu's qualification to join the top ten of the Hanmo group, he seemed hesitant to commit, preferring to discuss business matters. As Yehu deliberated between joining the Mo team or pursuing other opportunities, their conversation revolved around financial matters 
due to Yahoo's affinity for money. The principal approached Yahoo after his discussion with Miss Mo. The principal commended Yahoo for his heroic actions in saving both Miss Mo and the school. Impressed by his efforts, the principal intended to present Yahoo with a special award. However, Yahoo expressed his desire to decline the award unless all the prizes from the underground competition were distributed according to the principles of the Shadow Forest. Despite his initial reluctance, Yahoo eventually accepted the award on the condition that it would be given to Miss Mo instead. Additionally, the school would be temporarily closed for the next three days due to the recent incident. Yahoo is now with Yun Fei and his father, who is slowly recovering from the poison's effects. Although the recovery process is ongoing, Yahoo is considering alternative medicines to speed up his father's healing. Coincidentally, he meets Dr. Dean Zhang, who is known for his exceptional medical skills. Dr. Zhang mentions a quick cure available at the hospital, but warns that it comes at a high price due to its rarity. Yahoo's father, however, insists on resting and not spending extravagantly on medicine. In a surprising turn of events, Yahoo reveals an ace card, causing Dean Zhang to break out in a cold sweat. Dean Zhang inquired Yahoo about the quality of the card he had given him to present to Miss Mo. Dr. Zhang's demeanor towards Yehu changed instantly upon realizing that the card was a VIP pass that held significant value within the hospitals under the Han Mo group. Dr. Zhang wasted no time in instructing the staff to transfer the patient to the most luxurious VIP room and provide the three most effective antidotes as a gesture of goodwill. Little did the doctor anticipate the immense impact of the card he had handed over. When Dr. Wu returned in a state of panic, revealing that the hospital's best antidotes and medications had mysteriously disappeared. At the onset, the suspect was the director. However, with the absence of high-end bitter drugs in the hospital, Yehu suspected that the director had stolen the expensive items to obtain money for the auction. Yehu considered heading to the black market to secure the necessary funds, as it seemed unfair to involve Yun Fei, who was weary of the hospital environment. During their journey to the black market, Yehu shared his recent victory in the dungeon competition and how he had rescued Miss Mo Kier. Their progress was interrupted by three hooligans demanding money from Yehu. Despite Yun Fei's weakened state, Yehu shielded her from harm, insisting that he would handle the situation alone. Despite being mocked for his low level, Yehu remained resolute in protecting Yun Fei. Yehu, feeling insulted, approached them promptly and declared, I refuse to engage in violence in front of my sister. If you wish to live, surrender. Despite Yehu's words provoking the thugs and causing Dan to clench his fist in anger, a sudden swift strike from a stick swiftly incapacitated the man. It was not Yehu who had attacked, but another individual with remarkable speed who swiftly subdued the thugs, a man who identifies himself as a hiker. Since their intentions align, the man invites Yehu to accompany him to the black market. Initially suspicious of the man's kindness, Yahoo's doubts are dispelled when the man reveals that they are both alumni of the same school. This man, known as An Siong, is renowned as the first genius in the history of the academy and is frequently invited by professional teams. With this knowledge, Yehu decides to join An Siong in visiting the black market. However, Yehu remains cautious due to his affiliation with the Huang Zheng group, the arch enemy of the Hanmo group. Upon reaching the heavily guarded entrance of the black market, Yehu recognizes the guards, who warmly welcome someone they already know. Surprisingly, they intercept Yehu, but instead of hostility, they treat him with respect. Yehu is astonished by the preferential treatment he receives compared to An Seong. Meanwhile, An Seong is intrigued by how Miss Mo Kier, a high-status individual, could invite someone of Yehu's level to join her team. This piques his interest in the level 4 student. Upon arriving at the black market hall, they each had their own objectives and went their separate ways. However, prior to that, the senior had already added Ye Hu to his friend list. As the black market hall was quite spacious and they had only been to the VIP room, they were unsure of where to find the specific deals they were looking for. It was at this moment that Ye Hu strongly felt the intense aura from behind accompanied by the piercing gaze of a woman named Si Yu, who happened to be a member of the Hanmo group and the resident agent of the Hanmo group in the black market. Si Yu offered to guide Ye Hu, and subsequently, 
the group was led to a place known as the VIP room of the Handwheel Group. This particular location provided various amenities for VIPs and served as a Hanmo trading base with the highest authority in the black market. Here one could find rare and exclusive equipment that was not available in other markets, all of which could be obtained with sufficient funds. However, at present, Yahoo's interest lay in acquiring items rather than equipment. It didn't take long for him to search and discover the desired bidder and the person selling the item, who happened to be the previously suspected director. The current dilemma facing Yahoo is why a director with a high salary would resort to stealing medicine for money, and why a bidder would choose to purchase from the black market at a significantly higher price than usual. Typically, this medicine is sold for 100000 per bottle, yet the director is selling it for 600000 per bottle. Despite this, Yahoo remained determined to acquire the item. The intermediary facilitating the transaction instructed the woman to contact the seller directly, offering to pay one million per bottle if she agreed to meet in person. Yahoo realized the need to devise a strategy and promptly put it into action. The salesman was roughly escorted to a room by the officer, where he was confronted by Hal, who had been eagerly awaiting his arrival. The director, who must have been aware of the situation, had disguised himself with a wig in an attempt to conceal his identity. However, Yunfei immediately recognized him, much to Yahoo's initial suspicion. As the director panicked upon being exposed, he made a hasty attempt to leave. Yahoo was puzzled by how a child could afford the antidote, prompting him to reveal his passport. Miss C. Yu revealed that the card alone was worth 50 million rupiah, not to mention the money inside which shocked the director upon learning of Yahoo's wealth. Without hesitation, the director unmasked Yahoo and admitted his true identity. Upon inspecting the antidote, it was discovered to be a counterfeit product stolen from the Hanmo group by the director. In light of this revelation, Miss C. Yu ordered the immediate disposal of the fake potion. The director was expelled from the safe zone, destined to be devoured by monsters. Before departing, he warned that the safe zone would soon fall under monster attack, leaving no chance of escape. Only the ancient gate held the key to humanity's salvation. Interestingly, the director's words echoed those of Maru before his demise, creating a mysterious connection. However, Miss C.U. dismissed the director's words as a mere conspiracy theory, assuring everyone that there was no cause for concern. She explained that they were currently residing in the ninth safe zone, which had remained untouched by monster invasions for the past 50 years. As per the rules of the Hanmo group, any lost assets belong to the one who discovered them. Hence, Siyu received the antidote without assistance. Since the 3 million yuan allocated for the antidote went unused, the money would be given to Yunfei to purchase the desired equipment. Meanwhile, Miss C. Yu extended an invitation to Ye Hu to join the secret monthly auction, while Yun Fei eagerly deliberated on the value of the equipment she wished to acquire. Eventually, the two of them made their way to the auction, situated at the heart of the nine safe zones. Ye Hu planned to spend 15 million out of the total 17 million available. Ye Hu was promptly escorted to the lower level of the auction venue, known as Victoria's Secrets. Ye Hu was led here by Siu. Upon entering, Yehu was puzzled by the unfamiliar robe he was wearing. Siu clarified that upon entering the dungeon, a protective cloak is automatically utilized to conceal identities. Yehu grasped the concept, realizing that this allowed for prices to be raised without concern for recognition. Yehu was impressed by the grandeur of the place, certain that a significant amount of money was invested in designing this expansive black market. Observing Yehu's admiration, Siu urged him to cease watching and take a seat promptly as the auction was commencing. Shortly after, a host emerged to greet the attendees. He identified himself as the organizer of the Victoria's secret auction. Yahu inquired if Weiss could assist in the auction, to which Weiss confirmed. Weiss elaborated that he would provide an accurate rating of purchase value, ranging from one to five stars based on the auction item's characteristics and Yahu's attributes. This ensured that Yehu could acquire an ideal item without depleting his funds unnecessarily. Yehu was greatly impressed by the usefulness of the skill and inquired if there were any others available. Unfortunately, Weiss responded that there were no additional skills. Weiss then mentioned that if Yehu wanted to unlock more skills, 
he would need to quickly increase his account link level. This news left Yahoo feeling disappointed, and he decided to discuss it further after the auction. However, suddenly Weiss realized that An Cheng, the person Yahoo had previously met, was present on the platform below them. Yahoo was also taken aback by An Cheng's presence. He found it unreasonable because An Cheng, as a reserve team member, did not have the qualifications to participate in the auction or sit with the chairman. This made Yahoo realize that An Cheng's secret was not much different from his own. A moment later, the auction host announced the commencement of the auction and revealed that there would be ten highly valuable auction items. The first item up for bidding was a level 70 ancient magic crystal. The bidders were astonished to see such a rare and powerful magic crystal. The host explained that this magic crystal had been obtained by a group of mercenaries at a high cost from an advanced dungeon. Using this crystal would undoubtedly result in a significant level increase. The starting price was set at one million, with each subsequent bid required to be at least 500,000 higher. The participants immediately began raising the price of the item. In the midst of everything, Siu inquired whether Yehu had thought about purchasing the ancient magic crystal, as Siu was aware that Yehu was intentionally concealing his level. Siu was aware that Yehu's level was actually still well below level 70, and the ancient magic crystal would greatly benefit Yehu. Yehu was impressed as he couldn't deceive Siu's keen observation. Despite the item being quite beneficial, Weiss mentioned that the purchase value of the magic crystal was only two stars, since experience points were insignificant to a skilled expert. Therefore, Weiss argued that it was unnecessary to spend money on experience points. Yehu agreed with Weiss's viewpoint. Suddenly, An Cheng, who was situated on the platform below, raised the bid to three million. Following An Cheng's bid, the host inquired if anyone could offer a higher bid. With no further bids, the host congratulated An Cheng on acquiring the level 70 ancient magic crystal. This left Yehu pondering. An Cheng's initial bid alone was already three million, revealing An Cheng's wealth. Yehu wondered whether the ancient magic crystal was intended to boost his level quickly and join the core team, or if there was another motive behind it. Subsequently, the host introduced the second item a cell phone lock potion. Upon usage, it enhances the blood lock status for 30 seconds. The host highlighted the rarity of cell phone lock potions, especially with epic quality, making it exceedingly rare. The bidding for this item started at 2 million. Upon seeing the item, Weiss expressed her dissatisfaction by giving it a low rating of one star. She believed that the potion was unattractive and not worth more than that. However, Yehu, being the master of alchemy, found it easy to create such a potion as long as he had the necessary skills to unlock it. This revelation excited Yehu greatly, as it provided him with another opportunity to earn a substantial amount of money. The potion was eventually sold for 4.5 million to a VIP 11. Following this, the host proceeded to introduce the next item up for auction, which was the royal cloak. This epic equipment allowed its wearer to fly freely in the sky for a duration of five minutes, reaching a maximum height of 20 meters. However, it had a cooldown time of 24 hours. The starting price for the cloak was set at 3 million. Weiss couldn't understand why the world always produced flashy items that lacked any practical effects. She considered the cloak to be a mere one-star item due to its lack of usefulness. On the other hand, Yehu found the cloak visually appealing and showed great interest in it. Concerned about Yehu's financial situation, Weiss tried to dissuade him from bidding on the item, as she believed he couldn't afford such a luxurious item. Eventually, Yehu agreed not to spend money on the equipment. However, shortly after, Siu raised her hand and increased the bidding price for the cloak to six million. Siu ultimately won the item for that amount. Observing Yehu's fondness for the cloak, Siu remarked that life is short and one should fight for what they like. She believed that being too cautious and overthinking things was not beneficial. Siu then had the intention of presenting the item to Yehu. Observing this, Weiss cautioned Yehu about Siu's dark purple spectrum indicating that she was scheming. However, Yehu declined, stating that he couldn't accept it without doing anything in return. Furthermore, since Siu had already helped him a lot that day, 
he didn't feel right taking valuable items from her. Instead, Yehu requested Siu to hold onto the robe for him, and he would purchase it for eight million when he had the funds. Deep down, Siu felt a bit disappointed because her plan was to give Yehu the robe in order to make him indebted to her. And then she would intensify her efforts to persuade him to join Mo Gong's team. As the auction progressed, the host expressed his dilemma regarding the next item, as its usage threshold was quite high and its attributes were exceptional. Consequently, the item was destined to be exclusive to only a few individuals. The host then revealed that their fourth item was an epic drawing skill, which piqued Yehu's interest since he had been eagerly anticipating the appearance of a drawing skill. Shortly after, the host showcased the Heart of Steel skill drawings. This skill allowed the user to utilize blueprints to permanently create humanoid mechs that would obediently engage in combat. The mechs could also be modified and upgraded. The auction attendees were taken aback when they heard that the starting price for the technique was two million. Just a month ago, a rare drawing skill of that caliber had fetched eight million. They speculated whether the auctioneer was hesitant due to the high manufacturing level requirements, as engineering was acknowledged as one of the most challenging professions to master. Only the top-tier large corporations were willing to invest significant resources and funds to acquire it. Smaller companies with limited financial means couldn't even consider it. Consequently, over the years, no more than 10 individuals worldwide had attained a master's degree in engineering. Upon hearing this, Yahoo was astonished. He had not realized the immense value and scarcity of an engineering master's degree. Weiss emphasized that mere monetary investment was insufficient. To achieve mastery in engineering, one needed intelligence and talent far surpassing that of ordinary individuals. Even among the many titles, stronger than the previous master Crazy Moss, it was the engineering master who emerged victorious. Yahoo felt fortunate as Weiss had enabled him to unlock the most challenging engineering master's degree. Therefore, Yehu planned to delve into comprehensive development and testing in the field moving forward. Upon seeing the item, Siu immediately concluded that it would be undesirable to potential buyers. Yehu, on the other hand, was perplexed as to why such a cheap item was not being purchased. Siu argued that while the technique used in the mechanism drawings could be improved, it was still limited to supporting a single soldier. Additionally, even if an engineering expert were to create a master drawing, it would permanently deplete their intelligence attributes. Therefore, no large company would take the risk of investing in such a low-yield drawing. Yahoo, however, found himself intrigued by the lack of interest in the item. He saw an opportunity to make a small advancement. As no one had yet placed a bid, the host was about to move on to the next item. To his surprise, Someone suddenly bid two million for the item. The other bidders ridiculed Yahoo for spending such a large sum on what they considered to be a worthless piece of paper. Siu questioned Yahoo's decision to purchase the item, as it could only be utilized by a technical master and could not be resold. Yahoo responded that his motivation was simply the fulfillment of a man's dream to own a mecca. However, deep down, Yahoo couldn't help but laugh sarcastically knowing that while the item may not hold much value for others, it held immense significance for him. Yahoo emerged as the winning bidder for the picture at two million, as no one else placed a bid. He believed that the timing of acquiring the picture was perfect. Not only did it enhance his combat abilities, but it also provided a means to safeguard his parents and younger sister. Shortly after, the Lucky Ring's special effect was triggered resulting in a random boost to the Heart of Steel drawing technique. Yehu's excitement soared as unexpected joy came his way. Following the upgrade, the Mecha's initial level was now set at 20, and the Mecha's gender could be chosen at random. Yehu's enthusiasm grew, knowing that he could now easily handle monsters like the Ghost Eye Demon Spider. However, Weiss pointed out that Yehu's focus was misplaced. The crucial factor was not the starting level, but the ability to freely select the Mecha's gender. The mere thought of this thrilled Weiss. Yehu playfully nudged her head due to Weiss's eccentric behavior. He was genuinely delighted as his efforts had not been in vain. His objective had been flawlessly accomplished, surpassing all expectations. Yehu became intrigued by the final six items up for auction. The upcoming item was the Dragonskin Battle Shield, 
renowned for its robust defensive capabilities that reduced damage taken by 30%. It was sold for $7 million, earning a one-star rating from Weiss. Following that was the Bloodsword, which possessed the unique ability to convert 20% of the damage inflicted on enemies into self-recovery. The sword was sold for $10 million, earning a two-star rating from Weiss. After the announcement of the seventh lot, the atmosphere at the event became even more intense. The host proudly introduced a super-rare epic-level item called the Summoned Beast Demon Crystal, which could be unlocked for a staggering $10 million. This crystal had the unique attribute of being able to summon a magical creature to fight until its magic power ran out. The bidders became more enthusiastic and started raising their prices. Yahoo was amazed by this discovery. Although there were many types of magic crystals in the world, he had never heard of crystals that could summon beasts before. Siu explained that these crystals were extremely rare and usually obtained by defeating bosses in the Clay Realm or dungeons. The summoned beast demon crystal belonged to the top tier of battle-type demon crystals, making it even more valuable. It was understandable that Yahoo was unaware of its existence. Siu then mentioned that there were many secrets in the world waiting to be discovered, but Yahoo was currently not at a level where he could access them. She persuaded him to join Mo Kier's team if he was interested in uncovering these secrets. According to Siu, joining the team would provide him with the opportunity to explore and learn more. Yahoo began to realize that Siu was making a genuine effort to convince him to join the team. He believed that in Siu's eyes, he was like a frog at the bottom of a well, unaware of the vast possibilities beyond. However, Siu was confident in her own abilities and believed that she could show him a world filled with endless opportunities. After some time, the bidding concluded with a final selling price of 50 million. Weiss mentioned that the farther the item was from the audience, the higher the price would be. Yahoo regretted missing out but decided to quietly enjoy the show. The host then announced that for the next eight lots, space needed to be cleared due to the large size of the items. As the host stepped aside, a massive object appeared on the stage, the electromagnetic siege tank. This tank was armed with a 2,000 mm caliber magnetic rail cannon, a formidable siege weapon. The bidders once again became enthusiastic, believing that this auction would end up in the hands of a wealthy group. Yahoo couldn't help but feel amazed by the auction, realizing how much valuable information he had gained. As the penultimate lot was already so impressive, he wondered what the final two lots had in store. The Electromagnetic Siege Tank, a powerful weapon capable of destroying everything in siege dungeons below level 40. Even in level 40, 60 siege dungeons, this tank provides stable and significant firepower. It is the ideal choice for small and medium teams looking to conquer deserts and attack cities. The starting price for this tank is set at 20 million, with each subsequent bid increment of at least 2 million. Yahoo, belonging to a big family with only a team-only storage room, finds the concept of siege dungeons to be cruel. CU explains that dungeon sieges are just one type of team battle dungeon and there are even more brutal ones like tower defense, escape and kill, and biochemical warfare, which only top teams can tackle. Yahoo realizes that the more dangerous and violent the dungeon, the greater the rewards. However, he believes it is still too early for him to join a top team or build his own team to reap those benefits. The tank is eventually sold for 88 million yuan, and the host proceeds to present the penultimate auction item, a level 100 high-level dungeon key. The bidding for this legendary item starts at 30 million, leaving the bidders astonished. One attendee claims to have been attending auctions for years and has never seen a level 100 dungeon key before. According to his information, the valuable resources within the level 100 dungeon are worth at least 500 million. Yehu was taken aback when he heard that there were fewer bidders for the valuable item. He couldn't understand why. Siu explained that it was because dungeon keys had a time limit. Once the key was activated, the lock's durability would start to decrease. If the durability reached zero, the key would be damaged and unusable for entering the dungeon. Additionally, each time the key was used, its durability would decrease even further. Therefore, only the top teams would be willing to purchase such a dungeon key. Upon hearing Siu's explanation, 
Yahoo became curious if his level 40 dungeon key also experienced a decrease in durability. As CU had mentioned, a new durability attribute was added, and there was a slight rust on the surface of the key. While Yehu was inspecting his keys, the price of the dungeon keys had skyrocketed to 150 million yuan. With no other bidders, the host finally sold the key for that staggering amount. Yehu was once again amazed. The dungeon key had fetched a price of 150 million yuan. It was a testament to the power of money, regardless of the era. After the sale of the level 100 dungeon key, the host attempted to create more excitement by introducing the final item. An assistant then appeared with the last item up for auction. The host proudly presented the legendary item, the Resurrection Potion of Furious Elf, with a starting price of 100 million. This legendary potion possessed the mysterious ability to bring people back to life. The bidders were driven into a frenzy by the item, completely taken aback by the unexpected revelation of the secret medicine of resurrection. Some were even willing to go to extreme lengths, such as pawning off all their possessions, just to obtain a single bottle of this miraculous potion. Upon learning about the item, Siu grew increasingly irritated with the Qian family for failing to inform her beforehand about such an extraordinary product. She was convinced that the transaction price of the item must have far exceeded her authority. Out of sheer curiosity, Yehu approached Weiss and inquired whether the master of pharmacy possessed the ability to create a resurrection potion. However, Weiss responded by stating that the creation of a resurrection potion was strictly forbidden and inaccessible to humans in any realm. The host further explained that the skill of resurrection had always been considered a taboo since the advent of the O.L. Earth era. Even the most powerful priests in the world were unable to comprehend or control it. As for the resurrection potion of Furious Elf, it granted the user the ability to come back to life before their death, even if they perished in battle. However, the drawback of consuming this potion was the transformation into a bloodthirsty elf consumed by murderous desires. Concerns arose among the bidders regarding the costly side effects of resurrection. Nevertheless, the host reassured them that these side effects would only last for a month. After that period, the user would revert back to being a normal human. Upon hearing this explanation, the bidders began to make their offers, realizing the irony that people died without spending their wealth. If spending money could prolong their lives, they were willing to pay a staggering 150 million. Yehu concurred with their sentiments that life holds more value than money. Even if Yehu had a strong affinity for wealth, it would be rendered meaningless in the face of death. However, what piqued Yehu's interest even more was the mention of the elf, a being he had never encountered before. This sparked his curiosity about the existence of other races besides humans and monsters in the world. Unable to find information in books or on the internet, Yehu pondered whether the information was intentionally concealed, and Chung swiftly bid 300 million on the herb, leaving Yehu astonished by the substantial amount. He speculated whether Huang Zheng Group had provided An Chung with hundreds of millions for the transaction rights. Although Yehu found An Chung's action suspicious, he decided to maintain a distance as long as their interests did not clash. As the auction concluded and the host announced upcoming rare treasures for the next month, Yehu reflected on the positive experience he had at the auction. He resolved to return when he accumulated more funds, recognizing the auction house as a favorable venue. Yehu returned with Siu and inquired if his sister had completed her shopping as it was time to head home. His sister mentioned that she still had a billion bits of equipment to choose from. Yahoo expressed his gratitude to Siu for the valuable experience gained from the auction, despite not acquiring much. Siu humbly stated that Yahoo need not thank her, as his current knowledge was merely scratching the surface. She then suggested that Yahoo join Mogong's team for a broader perspective of the world. Yahoo responded that he would contemplate the offer. Since his sister was still occupied, Yehu granted her an additional half an hour to shop, taking the opportunity to purchase some materials himself. Reflecting on Siu's proposal, Yehu realized that his curiosity for exploration was limited, prioritizing his family's safety above all else. He decided not to take any unnecessary risks, even if it meant not joining Hanmo's group. Ultimately, 
Yehu understood that he had to rely on himself. Furthermore, Yehu was impressed by the drawing technique and found the required materials easily accessible after spending $4 million on the black market. As a result, the next step involved delving into the enjoyable world of programming.